In this chapter, we will start with two variable regression prob model, but we'll now go and deep dive a bit into the problem of estimation. To begin with, we want to go ahead and understand what is the method of ordinary least squares. Very, very important. See, by now you understand that this is the population regression function. And you also understand that the population regression function has this UI term because I'm no more talking about the population regression line. I'm talking about the population regression function. YI is beta one plus beta two XI plus UI where this part right here is expected value of y given xi plus ui this gives you yi we also know that prf is not directly observable obviously we cannot work with the entire population as a whole so therefore we have to use the sample regression function to estimate the population regression function the sample regression function will have a very similar function, which is yi is equal to beta one hat plus uh, b, uh, yi is equal to beta one hat plus beta two hat xi plus ui hat. In a lot of books, instead of ui hat, you will see ei. So you will see yi is equal to beta one hat plus beta two hat xi plus ei or this is nothing but y i hat plus e i where y i hat is the estimated conditional mean estimation for what estimation for this population conditional mean so this becomes my sample regression function or the sample counterpart let us see this diagrammatically suppose this is my x i Supposedly, I will take back to you, uh, take back you to the earlier example that we did in the previous chapter. Say that this is my income. I'm taking my income on the x axis. And let's say that this is my consumption. My consumption is on the y axis. Consumption is a function of income. Let's say that my income is 80. For all the families who had their income as 80, the consumption was 55, 60, 65, 70, and 75. Again, for the families whose income was 100, the consumption was again very, very different. For few families, the consumption could have been 80, it could have been 85, it could have been 90, 95, and so on, 98. Again, for families whose income was 140, there could have been different levels of consumption. What we did is that we found out the expected values of consumption for given levels of income. So this became my expected values. I joined those expected values for the sample and I got the sample regression function. Now, because the actual value of y is either above or below the expected value of y. Let's understand what it means. For example, for the first case, the expected consumption, given that the income level is 80, came up to 65. But the actual consumption, was 75, 70, 60, 65, 55. So the actual levels of consumption could be below the expected value because the expected is average. When I talk about average, some values have to be below it and some values have to be above it. So the actual value of consumption can either be below it or above it. So I say, that this is what the average is, conditional average. And 
this is what the actual value is. The difference between the actual value and the conditional value is nothing but my error term. The error term is the difference between the actual consumption and the expected consumption. So for this individual who consumed 75, whereas on an average consumption was 65 for the income group that had an income of 80, the gap is 10. For this individual, the gap is 5. For this individual, the gap is minus 5. For this individual, the gap is minus 10. Very important concept. UI is different. That is why it is UI. U1, U2, U3, U4. And for U5, it's 0 because he's lying exactly on the average. So UI represents, and here I'm talking about UI hand because I'm talking about its sample counterpart. Something that we discussed in the last chapter is the difference between the actual consumption and the expected consumption.